Okay. Member Stress will be joining us in a few minutes, just having a technical uh, okay. thing that has to be resolved. Is there any data on how many people stream this? Watch it. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there. That was probably sure there a question are. for Jeremy, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure there, are, there, there is. I just uh, don't have that information. Just curious. I mean, mm -hmm. we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. I see Member uh, Shpresos still coming in. All right, I think we're all here, so we can call this meeting to order. We're not expecting anyone else tonight, is that right? No, Brennan? you are correct. Okay. All right, very good. Let's call this meeting to order then. Uh, uh, can I have the roll call? Mm -hmm. Member Carlton? Present. Member Green? Present. Uh, Member Hanson Romero is excused absence. Member Moss, excused absence. Member Shrestha? Uh, noting she's present. Indicating she's present. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on my Great. phone, so it's a little oh, okay. very, yeah, no very good. And good then, evening. Thank you. Member Abbott. I, I am present, and we appreciate your efforts to connect, so that's good. Appreciate it. All yes. right. Uh, I will read our uh, land acknowledgement statement. Uh, the City of Albany recognizes that we occupy the land originally protected by the Confederated Villages of Lejeune. We acknowledge the genocide that took place on these lands and must make strides to repay the moral debt that is owed to this indigenous people, especially the Ohlone tribe. We thank them for their contributions, which have transformed our community and will continue to bring forth growth and unity. The city of Albany commits to sustaining ongoing relationships with the tribe and together build a better future for all that now make this their home. All right, very good. Uh, next item is approval of the minutes. Folks had a chance to review the minutes. I did and I move we approve it. Very good. Thank you. A second. Very good. I think we can have a vote on that. Member Carlton? Approve. Member Green? Approve. Member Shrestha? Oh, uh, you're muted. You, you can approve whether you attended or not. Uh, Correct. Okay, approved. Okay, <laughs> these are action minutes, so it's not like there's conversations to replicate it's just what happened and so it's pretty straightforward mm -hmm. and then uh okay. chair, chair abbott and i approve as well very good all right uh next is public comment uh, i'm not seeing any public i think that perhaps should somebody show up in a little bit we'll open it up but i'm not seeing anybody to make a public comment so we'll, uh, uh, move on any announcements so uh, this is an opportunity for staff or committee members to make any announcements of items not on the agenda Brennan, do you have some announcements for us? Yeah, so Albany Local Week will be September 19 to the 25th. Um, part of Albany Local Week we're excited to announce is going to be our Albany e-gift card program. Um, we're signing up businesses to be participants for it, um, but it, we, we're excited to, to kind of provide more information, which will be coming next week. Um, but yep, that's something to look out for. And then also um, the Parklet guidelines are going to be um, brought to council uh, September 19. So a lot of the work that you've done, what Transportation Commission has done, and what Planning and Zoning have done will now be brought to Council for, for their review. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't men mention that the Solano Stroll is this Sunday, 46th Solano Stroll. Uh, this will be a closed street event. We're expecting lots and lots and lots of people, so we're very excited. And then the day before, uh, Saturday, is another of our kind of quarterly stroll-ish events. Uh, and this is basically the stroll that the merchants have been asking for and some of the residents have been asking for, for for 10 years. We want a smaller stroll without outside vendors a sidewalk sale. So there'll be a lot of live music and a lot of things going on on Salon Avenue. So encourage everybody to come on down. Both of those are from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. And I think that's it. I mean, we, uh, I am also, I, I can, I think I, I probably announced this earlier that our, uh, I, but I'm pleased that our Citizen of the Year from 2020, 2021, and 2022 will be in the Stroll opening ceremony parade, as well as the Youth of the Year from 2022. The others are out of town. So we're excited that they'll, they'll get to experience that parade, uh, which is one of the perks of the, uh, the uh, uh, Youth and Citizen of the Year program. Any other comments? I remember Carlton? Yeah, I was just going to ask if there was a parade this year. So 
So, so uh, for various reasons, primarily security, but also overtime expenses, there is, but it's a much smaller parade. It's, it's about okay. 25 kind of invited uh, groups. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's a parade. There's definitely be a parade and it starts at 10, um, same, you know, up at the top and goes all the way down, all the way down to uh, Masonic and, uh, you know, so there we go. Great. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, moving, no other announcements, not seeing anything. Very good. Presentations. Uh, so this is item 5.1, uh, presentation of results for the Albany Employer Survey on jobs. And member Carlton and I worked on this, and I think we're going to make that presentation. Brennan, when did this go out? Can you remind me? It was spring, early spring? Uh, uh, June, uh, I okay. believe June 15 to July 15. Okay, so this is the... Yeah, the uh, the survey. You know, we've been doing an annual survey for since the pandemic, at least. Uh, mm -hmm. And this year, it was is our the subcommittee about the recruiting and hiring practices kind of created the survey to go out, and, and these are the results. Uh, Member Carlton and I have prepared a presentation that I am going to show. So I think I'm going to be, need to be a co-host. Sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier so that I can share my screen. Do you want to try sharing your screen? Oh, see, see if I can just try it? Yeah, just yeah, give it a shot and see what happens. Yep, you're it looks sharing. like it works. There we go. I guess I don't, I don't need to be co-host. I don't need that extra responsibility. Okay, very good. All right, uh, Member Carlton, shall I move to the next slide? Yes, next slide, please. Okay. So good. we compiled the results of the survey um, kind of ruled out a few of the questions. There were a few of the questions that we didn't include here that were just kind of more of the, the yes, no kind of things. But so overall, these are the compiled results of the survey. Um, looked like I was, I was kind of surprised that the bulk of the people are not hiring. 50% of the respondents were not hiring, um, but a decent amount were. Um, and the, the percentage of the people who were negatively impacted um, tended about 60% were being negatively impacted with about 20% of those very negatively. Um, and then some, it wasn't an issue for at all, about 40, a little over 40%. Um, next slide. Uh, as far as uh, the most effective way to find job candidates, word of mouth. I have to say this has always been my, um, you know, in my basic experience that word of mouth is always the best way. It looks like about 45% of the people who responded agreed that that was the best way. Um, employment specific website kind of surprised me that that was next up. Um, and other, I don't recall that we had any specific comments on what the other was and apologize if I missed that. Um, oh, sorry, and then back to how do you prefer to contact res uh, candidates who have submitted resume, the overwhelming, oh, sorry, I'm not seeing this share now. I'm unable to hear you. Uh, yeah. Chair Abbott. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. Um, so the number of candidates who, the, the people who contacted their, their resume, the Sorry, <laughs> the people who prefer to contact the res the candidates, uh, overwhelming was email um, and then telephone, text, and other. I need to get back there. Um, there we go. Okay. There we go. All right. Uh, this I thought was kind of interesting. The people we had talked about doing some sort of a job fair or hiring event. And overwhelmingly, people were not interested in the job fair or hiring percent. Almost 68% or so of the respondents were not interested. Um, and only 10% actually were um, or have participated and were interested again. Um, and then the other good piece of news was that of people who have made uh, offers that most have been accepted, a little over 60% of those people. Uh, on the next one, I think actually we Can may I have. Skip? Okay, there we go. Sorry. One. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm so lousy at this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, I should have shared. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, in hiring, mostly people look for long term employees, uh, almost 90%. Um, and if candidates required any special training or certification, 
uh, over half did or a little over half did. Um, one thing that we realized as we were looking for at these results was um, we didn't really specify what the training or certification was. We took this with a little bit of a grain of, of salt because, you know, somebody could be looking for certification, meaning a CPA, but training could also mean that somebody at a restaurant was looking for somebody who had, you know, previous maybe bartending or serving ex or cooking experience. So didn't get very granular on that one. Um, the next one, uh, overwhelmingly people wanted employees to be on site, almost 70%. Uh, and also overwhelmingly, little about 60% would be interested in posting their job to social media or job board. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, those were the, the basic responses. Now, there wasn't a great deal of response, although I, I want to give Brennan a lot oh. of credit because I believe they went door to door trying to get respondents to this survey and that or was that something else uh that was for other um other things okay ones, but, yeah, yeah. but we, we got we got uh 30 uh, ish responses i'd say so we're 34 respondents uh there were a number that were just not hiring not interested in, so we kind of just cut those out but but uh, there we go so again kind of repeating some of the things that were already said nearly all the respondents reported being negatively affected 20 percent of them very negatively affected uh, word of mouth was the most effective method for finding employees from any business. Not only did they say that was what worked for them, uh, but also when you compared uh, the next quarter, one of the questions about, you know, we offered a job and they said yes, it was nearly 100% for word of mouth, whereas for the online services, uh, it wasn't quite as high a percentage. It was like 80%. So it's not only numerically more, but also the more reliable. Uh, specialized online sites like Indeed.com uh, are, are a mixed bag. Uh, we had one comment that it used to work well, it's not working well so much anymore. So um, that's one of the other things they're really using. And, and uh, underscoring that every respondent looking for long-term employees, and I think this might have to do with that first comment about not a large sample, uh, is probably the people who responded to this are the ones who are kind of uh, looking for long-term employees. I, uh, but anyway, they're not looking for summer work, <laughs> at least not in, in June. So there we go. Uh, and then again, uh, what, what uh, Member Carlton said, the half uh, and more than half uh, either required or was desirable to have training. Uh, my guess would be that most of the ones that require training, that was more the, the CPAs and mechanics and things that would require some sort of certification where the others, it's unknown. So what can we take away from all of this? We had came up with some ideas. The, the point that the, the purpose of our subcommittee was to have come up with some ideas for how the city can promote or, or, or support businesses in, in hiring employees. Uh, since word of mouth seems to be the most successful and the most, one of the most popular, maybe there's a way we can boost word of mouth. And uh, combining that with the idea that a good number of respondents were interested in trying some sort of social media, maybe we can create a Facebook group uh, for Albany, California hiring and, and the posts would all be job offers or, or, you know, job openings, and then people could reply and, and that way kind of get out to the general public. I know that there's a lot of very active Facebook groups in town. So maybe that would be a way and would be a very low bar uh, to get started. Number one, and also for the, uh, the businesses to post to a lot of them already have a Facebook page that they're maintaining. So that would be something that, that we might be able to do. Of course, to make it successful, it would need to be promoted, the city e-news, the city website, the merchant associations. We need to reach out both to job candidates, but even more importantly, to the businesses to tell them that that's there. Another way to promote that would be to connect with the Albany High School and the St. Mary's High School counselors. Uh, they're often working with, with the students uh, looking for summer work. Again, remember, uh, you know, Interesting statistic that every respondent was looking for full-time or, or long-term employment. Uh, but as I mentioned down below, internships can lead to full-time employment. They can lead to training. And so that's a way to maybe help promote all that uh, and get a little more activity there. And then promote via Cal as well. Uh, uh, I guess Cal has gone to a service called Handshake uh, for their 
uh, job placement services. Uh, but I, I believe there's still um, places that we could post this information and say, hey, if you're looking for a local job, I mean, the bulletin board at UC Village, right? There's probably a lot of folks down in UC Village looking for work. So that, that would be some, or potentially over time. So that could be an opportunity. Uh, another way that we could help would be an information page, again, on the city website, maybe the chamber website, uh, hiring in Albany, uh, how to get the word out, uh, how to contact, how to follow up, and so on. And one of the first meetings we had, I think Member Carlton will remember this, was with a former uh, committee member, Petrilli, and, and he, of course, is involved in restaurants and management, and he's, he's very involved in hiring. And, and one of the things he tells his restaurant managers right off the bat is, is you never email, you always text. If you're trying to get millennial or younger, don't even bother with email, don't bother with phone, you text them. So that's lots of interesting information. So uh, that sort of information, as well as resources for making your job, uh, uh, you know, getting the word out of things. And then also, if you're looking for a job, how, how, to, how to find those opportunities. And then finally, continue building relationships with Albany High School. Uh, Internships can lead to employment and training. And I would say that the Chamber of Commerce, uh, for a number of years, I'm going to say 45 years before the pandemic, had an annual mixer with the high school business program. And there'd be, it was, it was one of our most fun mixers and one of the best attended, partly because the students had to be there for their grades. So that, that was really good. <laughs> but, um, but we'd also have one of the best attendants of the business people looking for interns and, and help and uh, summer employment. So uh, some employees. So that was very successful. We, we were, we offered to do it this year. Uh, the high school wasn't ready, but maybe next year we can we could get back to that. So what we're trying to do here is find ways that the city can help without a lot of resources. Uh, a number of respondents did say they'd be interested in a job board, but I'm very skeptical that that we could, you know, be having been involved in a number of organizations. I remember Carlton backed me up on this. Number of organizations trying to get businesses or or just members of an organization to do something to post something to you know they're already posting on md.com they're already posting on craigslist we want to give them another place to i just don't see that happening so the job board i don't think is would be effective and we also saw there was very little interest in a job fair so these are ways that are really just sharing information uh that the city could support uh hiring uh both by and and by Albany businesses and of Albany residents, and I, I think these are things that we should we should consider. This yeah, just to follow that up. Yeah, yeah. As you said, it was like it, like the Facebook group is you know kind of very is is not as labor intensive. If we have an actual job board, then somebody has to maintain that, making sure that jobs are current, taken down, posted correctly. Facebook, everybody's just used to it's it just naturally ages itself out. And again, that's something that potentially one of the merchant organizations could take on. It wouldn't have to be the city doing that. Um, true, true. Yeah. So trying to, that one of the roles of this committee is to leverage the uh, organizations out there. All right. Are there any questions before we go to public comment? Oh, I don't think we have any public yet. Oh, we do have it to the public. Okay. Any questions before we open it up for public comment? Not seeing any, we can uh, open it up. If anybody from the public would like to comment on this item, please raise your hand and we will recognize you. Give them a moment to find their hand. <laughs> All right, not seeing any questions, bring it back for discussion. Any uh, discussion? Uh, member Shethra, you've been in, you've been involved in hiring in Albany. Does this kind of jive with your experience and what you've seen? There we go. Hi, yes. So, um, yeah, that's what I was looking. But, um, I mean, what I would say is uh, the social media do work, right? And I don't know if we really need to open a different Facebook page because there are already so many groups in Albany, like, like you know, Albany High School, Albany, I guess, like, uh, what is it, Albany, California Parents. And there are some Instagram pages also. I don't know if it is related to city or Albany CA, Albany, California. So I guess like, I don't know if they could post, you know, we give information, the businesses get good information to them or they can they can post it to them, something like that. And of course these uh, other media, the Indeed and everything that also works. But yeah. I, 
believe people do come through the uh, Facebook and Instagram also. That is what is my experience so far. Okay. And so you, yes, have you so posted maybe jobs we should, Instagram? We should, yeah. uh, yes, Facebook, basically. Right. I was going to Instagram, I, was, I haven't tried. It was just I was trying to find so out the Facebook I have tried and we have got, yes, we have, we have got employees. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Thank you. Uh, any other comments or questions? No? Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. I think, um, I'm not sure what our next step would be, Brenna. Should we come up with a, something more solid than this or are we done? I mean, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll communicate with your subcommittee to talk about potential next steps. And okay. but I think okay. what you have, uh, I, I think, I think works at this point and then, and then, uh, we'll, we'll communicate. Okay. From here. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. So that's, that's that, uh, presentation. Thank you again, Brennan, for all your work on the survey and uh, member Carlton for our, uh, our work on the committee. Thank you. All right, uh, moving Thank on you, to, <laughs> yes, uh, moving on to uh, item six, the subcommittee reports. Uh, so uh, let's see, time, yes, we're fine on time. So I know we have a couple reports, uh, perhaps, uh, uh, let's see, oh, uh, yeah, the subcommittee to encourage art in commercial areas. Uh, Committee Member Green, are you ready to update yeah. us on that? Yeah, I am actually. Well, I will be in one second. Let me just pull up what I wrote. Um, not that I made a big report or anything, but um, so the subcommittee, which is two of ours, um, and two of sorry, two of the um, arts committee. Um, have met several times um, in person on Zoom and also once with the city, um, with representatives from the city. Um, we have decided that although there are lots of interesting projects we could spend lots of time looking into, the ones that seem the most, um, I'm really sorry, no one's home right now. I can't do anything about that squirrel outside. Um, but um, <laughs> um, well, now um, that we know it's a squirrel, it's cute. So you keep going. It's fine. Um, let me just, you guys, I'm sorry. Sure, let that's me just fine. No worries. Her. No worries. Of course. I never realized how vocal squirrels were until I started working from home during pandemic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the only thing louder than the squirrels is my dog when she hears a squirrel, then it's much louder than the squirrel. Yeah. Nice. Okay, sorry. So um so we decided that um when we combined what we knew of various kinds of projects, which obviously the arts committee knows more than we do about some of them, what well, seemed the place where we could make the most impact would be on trying to figure out a mural program. And so we identified some sites that seemed based on um, uh, council member or whatever we call each other Hanson Romero's um, knowledge of the local businesses, um, sites that seemed to lend themselves to possibly a mural project. And so we identified four of the top sites um, that also coincided with the Arts Committee's master plan or whatever their plan is called, um, where they have certain areas that they're targeting art to get art into. So we were trying to like cross reference. Um, and so the sites that we identified fit into their plan that they've already developed. Um, and the four places are Stanage at Solano at the Raven and Rose Wall, 
um, Renee's place on Santa Fe, uh, which actually that wall is the wall to like the Boba place, but, or whatever that's there, T or something. Um, but Renee owns the building. Um, and on gone on San Pablo. And this is <clears throat> the wall that faces the Bevmo parking lot. Um, and then the fourth one is the Cornell school wall on Solano. So there, we also liked that they're throughout the business district. So like it seemed now this is all in our perfect world, right? Who knows if any of these people are going to even want to talk to us, but so that helped us, um, kind of figure out then what would happen next. And so we talked to the city about what kind of, you know, what processes would need to happen to get a mural program going, what, not specifically what kind of money is available because the arts committee, the money's coming from them. So they're working on what money is available for that. Um, and, um, and just kind of working in collaboration to figure out how we could start a program like this. Um, and then we went back to our own subcommittee just the four of us and kind of figured out um, a division of labor that seemed to work so that each committee has certain uh, things that they're responsible for. Um, and I sent a report that Brennan sent to everyone yesterday. Um, and basically the role of the EDC in what we are proposing would be to approach businesses and property owners on that list and sound them out about if they would even be interested in having a mural. Um, oh, that says after getting our questions. Whoops, I forgot to take that out. We got our questions answered. Um, disseminate a short FAQ for businesses, um, which actually the Arts Committee developed one. So we would kind of take it and riff off of that. They developed one. I'm not sure if it was for a mural project or just, just in general to talk to businesses. Um, and I haven't actually seen it, but, um, but one exists. So my point is it's not starting from scratch. Um, oh, you guys, so embarrassing. I didn't proofread this. Um, so that FAQs would include in information about insurance and liability um who's responsible for maintenance and repair if it's a city funded project um con is the con you know who the contract is between any obligations to preserve the art the distinction between art and signage so um if it's funded by the city it can't in any way resemble an advertisement for the building businesses um so like there's a really cute um well, I think it's cute mural outside of um, Tata, and um, and it it clearly promotes everything in that block. That would not be something that the city could support. Um, and cost sharing requirements, application process, and basically work with the businesses that are interested in this, so that so that they would be able to move the program through over to the arts committee and get it approved quickly. Um, like what, what we're trying to do is set up a program that we actually have a chance of succeeding at. Um, and so sort of the EDC's role or the subcommittee's role would be to almost hold the businesses hands to get them through to the point where um, it goes to the arts committee and hopefully would get approved by the city council or whoever approves it. I don't know much about how the arts committee works, honestly. So, um, and then we'll also point out to them that they don't need to get uh, city funding to do a mural. <laughs> and if they don't want to deal with the bureaucracy, but they want a mural and they have some money, they can do that. Um, but this is a way that might, Mostly, I think it's more going to be a way to get the conversation started, um, and um, and so and and we felt all four of us feel like it, this is actually something that we could accomplish. Obviously, not 
by the end of this year. But, you know, maybe by this time next year, we'd be looking at something um, being close to being done. So it, it just feels, I don't know, it feels like a doable project. So, um, and there are other things that we could be spending our time on, some of which I've talked to you all about before. Um, but, um, but this seems to be where we could potentially get the most bang for our buck, both literally, but also in terms of how much time we spend on it. All right, great. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Very thorough. And I'm, I'm excited to see some action on this. It does sound exciting, the, the plan there. Are there any uh, clarifying questions from the committee before we move to public comment? Uh, I just, I, th I think you mentioned, I just wanted to clear, I just wanted, the question came up earlier. Uh, the, the Arts Committee has a budget for a mural program. They do. Or, and yeah. and they they kind of have a, the frame of a mural program that presumably also includes residential, um, but yeah. this would be a commercial. Okay, all right. Yeah, we just were, I mean, you know, I mean, who knows, right? Maybe we'll yeah. be wildly successful and then we can go knock on some, you know, residential doors. Yeah. Um, but we just decided, given who we are, that's me and Jennifer, that if, you know, let's just go with the businesses. We're on the Economic Development Committee, so. Oh, no, uh, no, that's fine. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> and, I just I, and I think yeah. the arts the arts committee has been wanting to do something, but my impression is they, they just needed, they, they needed someone to work with also. So it's just kind of, I don't know, it feels like a good match for all of us. It's working out. No, that's great. That's very exciting. All right. Thank you again. Any other questions? I'll open it up for public comment in case anybody attending is interested in asking a question or making a comment. Oh, we can have a discussion in just a minute. So if you have a question, we can wait. Uh, and still people not finding their hands. All right, so we'll move on to uh, now. Uh, Member uh, Shrestha, if you'd like to have a question, comment. Yeah, I had a question um, earlier because something binged on my earphone, so I could not hear clearly. Member oh. Green was talking about like we approach businesses and then uh, she also mentioned something about the funding so the businesses don't have to fund the murals right it, if that's if, what is yeah so so if they wanted to work with the city the city could fund the murals um but in working with the city obviously some things come along with that like you can't pick your brother to do the mural that you want your brother to do it, it would have to be go through an uh, approval process mm -hmm. and, right mm -hmm. and then there's insurance stuff and contractual stuff and who's responsible um so for instance some of i do know this, this is kind of interesting actually so some of the arts committee money is tied up in a project that was approved and um and but then something happened i think maybe the the building sold and the new owner didn't want to do the project um and so we're trying to get that money released back well, i'm not okay that was wrong the arts committee is trying i'm on some of the emails that's why but um to find out if there's a way to get that money released back into their pot because it's ten thousand dollars so you know that you know, five murals, who knows how much four or five murals would cost, but I my our sense is there is actually probably is enough to get four four big murals done. So um but we have to find businesses that want to work with the city on that kind of a project and have that whatever the art turns out to be on their building. Okay. Do you remember Carlton? Sure. So do the businesses then I assume the business would I guess I'm confused, like who works, who contracts with who? Does the business say, work with a muralist and say, here's what I think would look good on the side of the building and they submit that to the city? Or does the uh, city say kind of here's, here are our guidelines and you know, which direction does it kind of go? That goes from the city out. So, and that's the, that's the kind of stuff that as we um, approach the businesses that we would have very concrete answers to, which I don't have right now because a lot of the pr processes are still being worked on by the city. Um, sure. But um, 
Um, so we would go, let's say I went to you because you owned a business that was on our list. And I would say, you know, hey, would you like to, you know, what do you think about this? Here's an example of some other places that have done stuff. We think it would be really cool. Here's what the city could support and give you. Um, here's how the process would work. Um, you know, like basically talk them through the FAQs before they answer, ask the questions. Um, so, and, and um, it would probably be the, an arts committee person and a EDC person sure. going together. Um, so that's kind of what I think would end up happening in real life. So um, okay. just trying to engage them in the idea of, you know, it, how wonderful it would be if, you know, art in Albany turned into an amazing thing, right? It's pretty mm -hmm. possible. We're a small town and there's a lot of buildings, so, but we'll see. And just to bring, clarify, go ahead. I'm just saying, it was just, it, it could bring people to the community, to the, to the commercial district. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, Brennan. Sorry. Oh, just to clarify in terms of like the initial process to the EDC subcommittee is, is going to, is their role is to communicate with the businesses and then the arts um, are going to be, their role would be to, to kind of do outreach for artists. So it's like that separate, that there's the sort of the, the divvying of the roles. Is that correct, Member Green? Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. And their, and their roles would be to really, once we have a business on, on board, um, then like our, you know, the EDC's job is done. It kind of goes over to the arts committee who then works there. Then they hold the hands to get them to agree to the art that will work for everyone involved. Okay. Very good. That's very exciting. All right. Remember, Carlton, did you have something else? I was just going to so the so the business owner though would have some sort of input on the the actual yeah. final, final mural that's done. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a request for proposal kind of situation. So um, yeah, yeah, there would be things in place so that somebody wouldn't be forced into putting a piece of art on their building that they hate. Um, right. right now, I mean, if they hate it in 10 years, that's another question, but you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 there would be ways. I, I don't think I can only imagine no one wants to be in a situation like they're in right now with that building owner changing their, you know, not the new building owner, not wanting to do the project. Cause it sounds like a lot of work was done, you know, before that building was sold and it really torpedoed a pretty big project. Yeah. That's a real shame. Interesting. And just, Brent, uh, yeah. oh, and Member Green mentioned this as well. But yeah, if, if a if a building owner wants entire creative control, it they should it should be funded privately. So that's that's the difference. Is is it by going through the public process? There's more input. Mm -hmm. It's public dollars, so it needs public oversight and input. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. Any any other comments, uh, Member Carlton? Sure. Well, I think just partly, maybe just socializing it too. You know, to businesses like you know, here here's what we think you could work with the city. But then, I mean, maybe some of them just hasn't really occurred to them to paint something on the outside, and you know, just the socialization. I mean, like, yeah, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to take it on myself. Yeah, and I mean, we, the we whole thing out there. We talked to some business owners because we we walked around and talked to some of the businesses on Solano and um, talked to some that had done murals themselves. And, you know, like, first of all, nobody has a bad thing to say about putting art on their walls. Like once it's up there, they're pretty happy with it. And, um, you know, I can see that why they might not want to go the city route, but I ultimately what we're trying to do is exactly what you're saying, get the conversation going and so that, you know, maybe they won't want to go the city route, but they would want to do it on their own, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I envision us walking around with like on our phone photos to show them of art that is on building commercial buildings and how it could work and could attract people to their businesses, you know, it, you know, as well as making the city more beautiful, but, you know, they might be more interested in attraction to their business. Agreed. All right. Thank you very much. Any final comments, questions? Again, a lot of work done there. I appreciate it very much. Uh, and, and thank you. And that's, again, it's very exciting. Uh, okay. Uh, I just had a quick report. Uh, uh, Member Hans Romero and I did meet. We we're on two subcommittees, just two. 
Thanks to no, we're on three, but we met on two of them. <laughs> and she is working on uh, uh, one part of it, and she's not here, of course. But I wanted to mention uh, that I've been looking at issues or, or how to kind of recruit and uh, retain uh, businesses, particularly owned by women, BIPOC, and LGBTQ. Uh, a plus uh, businesses. And the idea that I was sort of pursuing at this point was uh, some sort of incubator, uh, some way to provide resources, perhaps space, uh, perhaps money, uh, other resources to uh, businesses, you know, kind of businesses that we find desirable that we would like to encourage in our, in our community. Uh, understanding that the city has no budget for something like that. I mean, understanding that we're a resource star business city. So I was looking for resources or grants, maybe federal grants for cities uh, to operate a program like that so that the money would come to the city, we'd, we'd get a grant for the city and then they would operate a program. Well, I didn't find any of those. What I found were a lot of programs for the businesses, you know, directly for the businesses, uh, building up those businesses. So. So again, kind of like with the, the job hiring or recruiting, uh, just turn to providing information. That doesn't cost a lot of money. We can provide information. So do some research and find resources uh, for, uh, uh, for those uh, sorts of business, for the business that we want to appeal to. Um, perhaps you know, build some relationships with some uh, coaching or, or, or uh, business consultation services. But then again, provide an information resource and, and broadcast that and, and make that available uh, again to encourage number one to to not number one, but certainly one of the top reasons is, is to make sure that Albany appears as appealing, as welcoming uh, to those communities. Uh, and uh, so that's kind of where I, I've ended up on that particular thread. There's some other threads I'm going to pursue, but I just wanted to provide a quick uh, update on that. Any any comments on that or questions? Just, just doing some research here. Yeah, it's a kind of a, a mid mid process uh, update. I guess I can open it. If anybody in the the public would like to ask a question, make a comment on this topic, you're welcome to. Just raise your hand. Not seeing now. I would also mention to the members of the public at the very beginning of the meeting we had a period for public comment, and and I didn't see you folks there. So if you did have a public comment on something that's not on the agenda. We can open that up, and you could you could uh, make your comment now. So, if you have a comment on something not on the agenda, you're welcome to do so now. Just just raise your hand. And not seeing any comments. Okay, very good. All right, uh, I think that closes out. Any other subcommittee updates? I think that's all that I'm aware of. All right, that closes out our agenda. Future agenda items. Uh, anything coming down the pike that you know of, Brennan? Um, not at this point, but, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, there'll be follow up. All right. Well, we had, uh, we needed to have a short meeting and we did. So congratulations. Everybody stay cool. Thank you very much. And, uh, see you in a month. Well, less than a month. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank right. you. Bye. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Get the stroll. <laughs>